I have embarked on this. Barb said, well, let's pull off this recipe. She um, told me that her mom has a blog. And she says, this is my mom's recipe. This is what I've been making for years and years. This is what I was taught on. And so the recipe that you have today is Barb's family friendly Passed down from generations. Has always worked. <laughs> no, it's going to work. It's going to work. Um, and she makes it in Arizona, and we make it here, and it has been really, really great. So um, we're just excited to have Barb. She was like, I was just coming in to help. And I was like, well, now you're teaching another class. So, <laughs> so forget Max today. We're going to be making toffee. But we're excited she's here. She's always felt like family. Um, we met through Instagram. She was just, um, during COVID, she was trying to figure out ways that she could teach math to her daughter. And who, who else doesn't, I mean, who, I love, that's how I learned fractions, when I finally could say, okay, a quarter, an eighth, a half, I can remember those things. And so we take those things that are our math lessons or even science lessons and we apply it into the kitchen and it somehow just seems to stick a little bit easier than if we pull it out of the math book. Um, and so she took those math lessons making French macarons and now has a full-fledged business and, and a blog and an Instagram that just helps to encourage people to get back into their kitchens and take those scary recipes that we may be afraid of um, and take them head on and, and, and enjoy the process, enjoy all of that. Join so, the journey. Um, her Instagram is on there, Sweet Mac Shop. If you don't follow her, she's a lot of fun. She has recipes mixed in with some dancing and some gangster rap and you know, all <laughs> things. So, but she has a good time and she's a wonderful mom and it's fun to see um, into other everyone's lives. And so you can follow her there, but let's make toffee. Let's make toffee. Thanks okay. for yeah. jumping in here yeah. today. <laughs> I was joking, tomorrow's classes because they're my people and they follow me on Instagram. I'm making them all dance <laughs> tomorrow for a reel. But because you may not be familiar with me and I don't want to embarrass myself, we'll just keep it to the baking today. So a uh, couple things about this recipe. This is a family recipe. I literally make it every Christmas uh, and we give it away. We give everything we bake in our kitchen away. Um, I believe that food connects humans and I believe that's why I love food so much. So. Anyways, some basic overall about the ingredients. Normally I'd be, sh like if we were in my home kitchen and I was doing this at home, I would have uh, a bag of raw almonds and I would throw them on a baking tray and just stick them under the broiler. Maybe for one, two minutes, watch it closely. You don't wanna burn those almonds. If you do burn them, it's like burning garlic, you gotta chuck it and start again. Don't try to salvage that, trust me. Like save your butter, throw out the almonds. Um, and try again. So you toast the almonds and then you would stick them in a food processor and you kind of want to get this dimension. You want some crumbs, right? Because we want to spread a little bit amount of almonds a long way. Ingredients are expensive these days. Like we really want to make this stretch. So you want some finer pieces and some coarser pieces. You definitely want people to know they're eating almonds. So um, that's kind of the makeup of what the almonds should look like after they're in the food processor. Now, I didn't elect to do the food processor out here because I break things and I knew if I touched it, it would probably break and then you would lose all confidence in me. So I'm just gonna rat on myself. So I pulsed them behind the scenes just now. These are toasted and these are also salted. Unsalted work as well, just any type of almond. Um, you just don't want like a honey roasted or an almond with coating on it. Um, that will change the dynamic and taste of your toffee. No Jordan so, almonds? I mean, <laughs> I guess there's a first for everything, and we'll experiment that later. Check it out on my Instagram when it fails. Um, just kidding. So these are your almonds. The next parts of my recipe are so simple, right? Four ingredients or less. Did you know macarons are four ingredients? I'm a big fan of less is more, and these are this is right up my alley. So we have caro syrup. We're gonna mix this with some warm water to get it solidified already into the warm water and add the warm water to the butter. So we don't wanna add cold water to a hot butter. That's number one way to get to separate, right? We wanna add either lukewarm or warm ingredients into our hot pot. Is this on? That's just still hot. Um, no. I'm gonna light my sleeve on fire. This is gonna be like something out of on Home Alone. Um, yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. I'm still talking about ingredients. Okay. okay, so then we're using unsalted butter. People are like, well, can you use salted? Yeah. Does it make a difference? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Does it make a difference? 
Yeah, it puts a little more salt. I, but can you taste it? Thing? I don't yeah. know. It's not like dumping a salt container in your mouth. Like it would be a minuscule addition of salt, in my professional opinion, which is not professional at all. But I just <laughs> I sometimes switch out salted and unsalted all the time randomly at, for no reason whatsoever. So um, I'm using unsalted today, just like my mom did. Uh, my mom puts lightly salted. This is my mother for you. She probably takes unsalted. She probably blends in lightly salt and then reshapes it into cubes and sticks it in the fridge. But I'm not that way. And so we have unsalted butter because we have salted almonds. All works out. We're at a wash. Okay, sugar. We're at one cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. Look at, see, basic ingredients. This is so easy, right? You're going to be professional in no time flat. Okay, so I'm adding my butter to the pot. If I couldn't unwrap that or I got wrapper in it, that would be a really good start. We're not going to eat that one. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're not eating this one. You're eating already made, beautifully turned out, unseparated, fantastic toffee. And you can just put it in your purse and give that to your neighbors if you want. We won't tell. Okay, so I'm turning on this burner here. There you go. And I'm turning it to like a medium, medium-ish. Is that is that a level medium-ish? Mm -hmm. So between like a, a maybe a four, I don't know, or um, where the bar gets a little bit bigger, or if you have electric, like a four or five. Okay, I think I covered it all. I use a whisk for this part. It helps keep that butter and the sugar happy, because everyone likes happy butter and sugar. And then why that's melting actually, I'm going to turn on the hot water and mix in my caro. So it's two tablespoons of hot water or lukewarm water, but not cold water, right? It's still cold. Thank you. Brad, the dad's got us some new water here. So. It's a long way from the water here, though. <laughs> <laughs> two blocks down, so give it a minute. Make sure we're not going to burn our butter. <laughs> it's warm. Warm? It's coming down the street. You can do it. It'll go from that to hot really fast. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You lied. <laughs> it's still warm. It does? Oh, it's getting warm. Okay, how many of you stick your spoon in and splash yourself? <laughs> Ready? Like that, all the time. Two in there. Perfect. And then we're adding one tablespoon. My butter's still good. It's starting to bubble. And I'm really exact in everything I do. That's a lot. That's a lot. If you've taken my math class, you know that I'm absolutely not exact, and that's exactly against the rules. Okay, so I'm just stirring this up, getting it. Mix in and all ready. So now we're coming back to our butter. So easy so far, right? We haven't screwed it up except for the thermometer. You, you want a, th uh, a thermometer that's going to give you an exact reading? I use candy thermometers. There's a difference. There's a meat thermometer and a candy thermometer. Make sure you're using a candy thermometer. Temperature really does matter um, for this recipe. In fact, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that now. Elevation also matters. So you'll see in my recipe where I tell you, adjust the temp that you want to reach based on your elevation. Sure. So we're at 4,000. 45. 45, so we want to go um, eight degrees less. Okay, so every thousand feet up, you subtract two degrees off the 300. Okay, did I do that right, 292? Heather, how do you work your thermometer, friend? Yeah, you don't need it until so with this recipe. Also, if you notice, like I'm gonna have you cover the pot. Like people are like, what? You're gonna leave it alone? Yeah, you're gonna. It's like a teenager. You're gonna let that just marinate in its room for a little bit. 
until it comes back with a better attitude. <laughs> and I have three teenagers at home. I may look like I'm 12. I'm not. I have a college, a junior, and an eighth grader, and I promise you, it's like a circus. Okay, so my butter's melted, so I'm gonna add in my sugar. And I'm whisking. like my concentration phase. Have you ever like, you can't do two things at once? This is me pouring stuff into a hot pot. Like I wanna look at you and smile, but I know I'm gonna like regret it. <laughs> okay, so sugar's in and now we're gonna make sure the temperature is bubbly. So this is where I'm like mid, mid range again, five, four maybe. And you're just getting this to stay together, that's the goal. So I live in Seattle, so when I'm adjusting this, was this written for like Utah, Arizona, or? It was written for California, so you're good in Seattle. Sure. Okay. So no matter where you are, the, the rule applies the same, right? If you're above sea level, every thousand feet. So since you're at sea level, you'll leave it at 300. And your color of your topping might differ. So for me, I live higher elevation than where I grew up making it, right? In California, I live in the mountains of Arizona. My topping was a lighter color. It still broke the same, it tastes the same. It was still delicious. It might not be that deep brown color, like your sweater, raise your hand, it's a beautiful sweater. Top there you go. It may not be like that, that brown color, but it's still good. You just don't want it too soft and you don't want to burn it, right? Okay, so we're bubbly. I'm gonna turn this down just a tad and I'm gonna cover it for three minutes. Does someone have a timer? I got you. And now we're gonna play charades, ready? I'm just kidding. Um, but I can't ask question, questions. I have a question. So I was always taught not to do what you just did, the stirring. Yeah. So, and you know, you take a pastry brush and you go along the side yeah. so there's no crystals. like. Is that not a thing anymore? Uh, that is a thing. I will okay. not scrape my pan when I dump it in here, but I okay. just went at it like okay. a boss in this pan. So I hope it's not a thing. I don't know. Um, well, you've obviously no, before. like fudge, toffee. The rule is you don't scrape the pan because you'll get the crystals off. But I also don't want my I want my butter to be happily married to my sugar. So we got to figure out a happy medium for that. For me, it's the whisk. Um, I did not. I won't scrape the sides when I'm doing a spatula. When you see when it starts after the three minutes, I'm gonna spatula from here on out until I get up to temp. Yeah. Does that answer that question? Yeah. So okay. don't scrape the sides. Don't scrape the okay. sides. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I told you. I can be trusted. I really can. It's gonna sizzle at you. Did you see that? Do you see it? It'll still be okay. <laughs> I knew I was gonna jinx myself, thank you. So you add the caro once your butter and your sugar are together. I am a professional, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna let it hang out. Still give me that three minute time, if you would. Did you already clear it? It's, yeah, I'm still going. Okay, perfect, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So you are using well, you're next. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. A Dutch oven pan? This is you a stob. I, I've used it in the cheapest of cheap when, when my husband was in medical school. I've used it in the nicest of nice. This works great. Um, I think it just matters on that temp. The temp is the important thing. Okay. Yeah. The vehicle to get you to the destination, that's your choice. You can go in a Lexus or in a Subaru, but the destination is what matters, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, see, there you go. Any others? Questions, that is? No, quite a bunch. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, so while that's going, we're gonna add our almonds to our pan. I'm not spraying this with cooking spray. No, no. And I'm gonna sprinkle half of this just like that. You see, it was so technical, you almost missed it. It's like a, a wah and a wah and a doo-wah and a wah, and that was, that's it. 
You didn't miss much. I forgot the caro and I got the butter. You're just fine. Birthday girl, so we had to oh, get her. Happy birth. Oh gosh, an embarrassment. Happy birthday. How old are you? Uh, 20. 20. That's exciting. I miss that metabolism from those days. Okay. How long do we have? Bingo. Okay. So now this is when we're going to keep temp. So do you see it? It's so bubbly and good. So my mom always would say, you need to watch this. It goes from 222 to 300 like a freight train, and it never happens that way for me. So it's usually pretty steady. So you want the candy thermometer in your pop and not touching the bottom. It will pick up the temperature of the bottom of the pan, okay? Make sense? So you can have like this awesome little holder on the side, but this sticks it pretty far into my pan. So I'm just gonna hold it for you. I'm gonna double task this, so you're on your own. Teach yourselves. I cannot answer anything, I'm just kidding. And I'm just gonna stir this occasionally. But it's, yeah, I, well, Heather got it so good, and then, and then I um, moved it, because I was like, how am I gonna whisk? And actually, I'm in a spatula now. Wait, you can hold. Too. Yeah. I actually said a hand. Oh, it, our hand model Whitney here. Do you see your hands on there? Oh, wait, that's the wrong oh, screen. It's over there. It's fabulous. Oh, there's two. This kitchen's amazing. <laughs> I'll be in here tomorrow for a couple of hours, so I'm glad we're figuring out this technical stuff now so I don't, so I seem really like I know what I'm doing tomorrow when I'm teaching my master craft. See how that works? Okay, other questions? Toffee or personal? I can answer personal. Yeah. So I've never made toffee, and it's made me a little nervous hearing that it's really hard to make from other people. Like, what are the troubleshooting? What okay, so things that okay, go things that could go. Oh, let's oh, let's deep dive into this. Okay, this is korma mm -hmm. at its finest. Um, so your butter can separate off your the toffee mixture. So when you're pouring it, it looks all good, and then you have like this oil on top. That's your, I mean, you can try to paper towel it off, but I'm so sorry, try again. Uh, another thing is people say their chocolate slides off. Or it's too thick. Too thick? You just spread it out. No? <laughs> <laughs> these spat the these spatulas are my favorite. They're called gear, but they're spelled like gur. And don't say gur on Instagram because they won't. Reshare your stuff because you, you lose credibility. Say their name wrong. It's gear. Like I don't even know like what, but yes, yeah, gear. But um, like just spread it out. But you got to move quick, right? Because toffee sets up. Some other troubleshooting is burnt toffee. It becomes almost like crumbly because we've overcooked it. Uh, if your chocolate slides off your toffee, you've added the chocolate at the wrong time. You want to pour your toffee. And then you want to just let it sit for just a second or two. And if you can dimple in, no, don't stick your hand in hot toffee. It's 300 degrees. <laughs> like there's a reason why I have no fingerprints. But you want to give it a second. And then if you can indent in, get your chocolate on there right away. And then I, I use baking chips and I let them sit. And when they turn a dark color because they're melted, then I spread it over the top. So you don't melt the chocolate. I do not. Top. You can, you can, but I'm telling you, I'm highway to easy over here. So what causes the extra butter to pool? That's a separation issue when you're baking. So you're just not stirring enough? You're stirring it's, uh, mm, you got me to lie to you? I have no idea no, why it happens. Okay. Um, not hot enough heat. Usually it's when you add a cold element into a hot element. Okay. So that's why we use warm water. But if you want me to get super technical, I will research the heck out of it tonight and I will post it on my Instagram tomorrow. Um, but it usually is temperature. So adding a cold thing into a hot pan, we're dropping that temperature dramatically and quickly. So that's not friends. So then they separate. Okay. Thank you. are welcome. So we're at 256. 292, remind me, okay? Because I'll forget and then, you know, it's just life over here. 
Okay, any other questions? I have a question about the thermometer. So why can't you use a meat thermometer if it's just the same? If it's electric and it can give you the dial reading, you should probably be okay. Most meat okay. thermometers just give you like a tab. Okay. Poultry, I'm, I'm tab, 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 beef, tab, 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 lamb, tab, 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 See, no, I'm vegetarian. Read, like, yeah. digitally. So you want something that will give you the exact. And you'll notice that this is going to start turning colors. Oh, you just, yeah. just help a sister out. <laughs> Most candy thermometers also have a longer probe. So your hand. Did you hear that? Most candy, longer probe. Yeah. yeah. So it keeps your hand a little further from the heat. So when I'm baking fudge, I do it in a big pot because I bake a lot of fudge, and I have a longer probe on that. And actually, I have a glass one with mercury in it, which is really unheard for. Yeah, like I don't even they make those. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Mine so So the way you're stirring, you're getting it from the bottom, but you're not just breaking the side. I am trying not to scrape. Do you see me every now and then forget my own rule? And I'm like, oh, no, don't. And that's nice because. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I don't want it to burn to the bottom. But do you see the color change? Does the camera pick that up? It started out a really blonde yellow and now we're like into like a tan color and it's just going to keep going. Now I said again, go by temp, not by color, okay? Got it? We're friends with that? If you go by color and you wait for that dark amber color, it might be too late. You have like a two second window of perfection. So go by temp. Yeah, so the moment it hits that number, you take, you pull it. Yeah. In your oven. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So we're there. Yep. So we're at 192 right now. I'm turning this off. 292. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 192, 195. I was going to say, I'm going to 300. Yeah. Well, 300, and then we factor in elevation. Yeah. Do you want to? She tells you. Okay, so I'm going to just drizzle this over. Elevation? Yeah. And like I said, this is a really blonde toffee. That's okay, it's gonna be good. Does the color change the taste? Um, it might taste a little nuttier. I really wanna scrape that. Everything in me says scrape that. It's just like a waste, it's like reckless abandonment. That's $9 of butter. Get out, you can do it. Watch me uh, light the burner on fire. Okay. So now I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to smooth this out. Can you scoop it over the camera? Where, where am I? Where am I? There you are. Gosh, I, perceptual ability is not my forte. Okay. So I'm spreading this out and then it's dimpling without coming off, right? I didn't I didn't stick my finger in that. Did you notice? I can be taught. Baking chips, I love mini, they melt faster. So the recipe says a cup. I'm just gonna like do one of these. Measure with your heart. Measure with your heart. <laughs> now they say you're not like chocolate, you can't please everybody. But I really feel connected to chocolate in some weird way, so. <laughs> Okay, so then you're gonna notice that these are gonna change color. They're melting. And as soon as they're all melted, then I spread it over the top and I hit it with some more almond because it's not really that attractive. I mean, <laughs> that's why they make sweaters, right? So I'm gonna spread this over it and then I'm gonna be like myself and wear a sweater and make this so cute and it's gonna be great. And then you break it, let it cool completely It'll just, if you take a, a, the tip of your knife and stab it in every once in a while, it'll just crack so beautifully. And then I am all about presentation. Uh, my background, my degree is actually in interior design. So I package everything to the hills and cute bows and all of that. And it's the perfect neighbor gift. So when you buy top and canisters or whatever, it's nice, perfect squares. How do you cut it into canyon? Well, that's wizardry. And it's probably a machine. If I'm okay. Gonna, yeah, you can cut it. You, it absolutely can cut in lines, but I like one wrong cut and you're done. So I just take the rustic approach and make it look all natural. <laughs> Any other questions?
Did you learn something today besides yes. the fact that you can screw this up? I'm just kidding. Okay, so this is like I can see all my chip, chip colors. And do you see that? It just spreads right over the top. Nothing separated. Duly noted. Do you see that? And actually, I probably want to. I'm telling you, mini chips are like the key to success because they melt so quick and you're like, oh, this was so easy. Do you have a preference between milk or dark? Chocolate? I love semi-sweet yeah. usually, and I usually, like I said, I always use the mini. Yeah. Any other questions? No? No hands? When you say sliding chocolate, does that mean it's going to like slide off? So the chocolate would literally slide off the top. So that happens for two reasons. One, your chocolate, your toffee was too cold when you put on, like if you melted the chocolate, or it was too hot. So one or the other, one dramatic way or the other, or if you had that separation and the butter separated out, that's just a grease pit, right? And nothing's gonna stick to that. Yeah. Okay, so this is ready to spread again. Gosh, I'm so proud of us, you guys. Look at, we did it. We did it. This was a group effort. Okay, and then another one of these like super technical <coughs> swoosh, swoosh, swooshes. <laughs> and then you're gonna let this sit for two hours. The length of maybe Moneyball, Blindside, pick a good movie. That's how long it needs to sit and hang out. You absolutely can, just make sure that temperature is on point. She doesn't cook it. Okay, that's what I does yours usually not You'll be next. come to the edges like that? or Yeah, this is don't. normal for me. My recipe makes this much. Like it, like back in the day when they measured like your land, four oxen by six oxen by, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it makes this much. Okay, I'm sorry if this is just me being a but we have been plagued by this toffee separation for years. And we have our grandmothers time old English secret recipe that we as anybody but <laughs> it ours doesn't separate until the very end. Like this very last minute. You're like pouring it in and you're like, what just happened? It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You're watching the temperature. You're we're like not we're doing all of the things. And maybe it's just us, but we go to pour it in and it's like the very last second that it separates. So is there any advice on yes I have lots of, I have lots of advice okay. on this subject matter also yes um, okay so have you ever had a batch workout yes and we can't find a rhyme or reason why is it we didn't add the almonds in this one and it worked out just fine we changed butter okay think of it differently think of it differently what time of year mm -hmm. did it turn out was your house cold was your house hot was your ovens on did you start with a cool kitchen? You gotta remember, like I'm macarons, right? The most yes. finicky cookie yes. in America. And the way I troubleshoot is I look at my variables yeah. and I see what changed. So you might have had a cooler kitchen that day or your ovens might have been cranking because you were holiday baking and your kitchen might have been warmer, mm -hmm. right? Just something that simple yeah. can distract and separate. I'm and not what kidding. Doing is like, what are the variables? What about different brands of butter? Whatever it is. Like more like, fat or less fat? Still, so we'll look at both. Yeah. Look at, look at temperature of your home. Yeah. Something that's not related to the, to like the X, Y, and Z, right? It's a rainy day. You want everything nice and toasty. Like in here, it's not cold. You don't feel that bite, that cool bite in here. It's, it's lukewarm. Yeah. Another thing too is um, with candy making is the weather. So like the pressure from, humidity. if there's a storm, if there's humidity, if there's, like that can totally, we've made butter mints here and it's totally failed and it's been a stormy day. And we'll make it two days later, same yeah. recipe, same ingredients, and it works perfect. Yeah. Yeah. R&D yeah. like, the heck out of that sucker. And then I want to know. Yeah. So message me. So, so I want to know that you were successful. Do you ever get separation with corn syrup in your coffee? No. Like, does yours ever separate? No, but I never knew it could until two seconds before. I'm like, Heather, tell me what can go wrong. And she's like, well, <laughs> notice. No. So we don't use corn syrup. 
Did she leave that ingredient out on her deathbed thinking I got them? <laughs> She's like, I told them. <laughs> Yeah. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your question right now. But do you see that I forgot it even? I even forgot it and we're fine. So Yeah. Yeah. Do it, do it. Now I got a question down here. Does the butter matter? Well, hopefully you're using grade A butter. Yeah. Unless you're personal friends with the food nanny and you're getting it from her cow, I don't know. <laughs> Kirkland butter versus like Kirkland. Kirkland butter is the best. So Challenge actually makes Kirkland butter. I'm going to blow your mind right now, but half of Costco products are made from the original and they're repackaged. Huggies, that's Kirkland brand diapers. My brother worked for Costco, I swear. So you can see that I left it for a while, right? We let it get up to that hotter platform of temp, and then we manipulated the product, right? So when it was still in the cooler phase, I didn't touch it. I got it incorporated, I left it alone. And then once it gets up to that platform of hot, and it's all bubbly and good, you're not gonna disrupt it. Yeah, yeah. But don't scrape the edges. Any other questions? Yeah, humidity affects everything, including our hair. Like, humidity is a big factor. Yeah. So wait for those three days that are real good and sunny. Make all your coffee that day. Pop them in the freezers. Yeah, when I make macarons and I'm teaching and people have a hum humid climate, I, cr I tell them to crank up the air conditioner, put a jacket on, crank up that air, it cuts humidity. Yeah, the cool air. But then you might have separation because your environment is so cool. I don't know. I mean, three hog jumps to the left, spin around twice and try it again. It might work. It's all voodoo. <laughs> yeah, any other questions? Yeah, how do you store, how long do you store? Uh, airtight container, room temp. Um, how long does it last? Not long in our house. Maybe a day. <laughs> but usually I package it up and get it out the door pretty quick. It's, it's technically a brittle, like it's not gonna go bad. I, mean, I wouldn't serve it from last year. I have my limits, but I mean, two weeks, three weeks, it'd be fine. Yeah. Did you try it? It's yummy, right? Very yummy. This, this is taking it one step further. If you want to make like, not couples, but you know, like an individual, then you can make like a little bit of 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 a Amazing. Yeah. Yes, do that. Yeah, we, we have a little square silicone mold um, that we sell on the floor. You'd have to be fast and it would probably make a mess. <laughs> yeah. But um, that would probably be the do easiest Do you spray it with nonstick spray or nothing? You, you don't have to with silicone because oh, yeah, it, it, pops it will out. set up. Yeah, and then you can just flip it and they'll pop right out. You can even take it a step farther and make it like into a baking cup and then like put chocolate and then nuts and then have like a little like Reese's peanut butter cup mm -hmm. toffee. The silicone and Let's candy maker. Let's that. Yeah. Even me. Okay. Any other questions? Can you accelerate the cooling? Pop it in the fridge? Um, yeah. You probably. I. The only thing would maybe the, the chocolate might, might streak yeah. a little bit or, or the might, temperature might change. Or might discolor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put my out on my patio. I cover it, put it on my patio in the middle of winter, and it's done within like 10, 15 minutes. There you go. She's a pro. Anything else? Uh, I have a very interesting relationship with bubbling. I cannot share with them. Just because they're variables in there, there's more liquid. Is the cook time double? Probably not. Is the cook time one and a half? I don't know. 
So unless I try it, I'd never recommend it. Yeah. No? Thanks for coming. Thank you.